What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my little soup rolling shop here in Northern California. In today's video, I'm going to walk you guys through all the steps to install these ARP head studs in your EJ205 motor. And as a matter of fact, all the steps I walk through will apply to pretty much any motor that you're going to install these ARP head studs in. Thanks so much for checking out the video guys. I'm Luke, this is the Super Only Show. This is my little Subaru Only Shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles in motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay guys, ARP head studs. And then one of the first things you guys are probably thinking is how much more do these suckers cost compared to just replacing those factory head bolts? Well, I'll tell you right now, I got these things for about 185 bucks. And last time I checked, replacing those factory OEM head bolts typically costs around 120 or 125 bucks. So these suckers probably cost you about 60 bucks more than just replacing those factory head bolts. But I'll also mention a lot of people just reuse their old head bolts. And that's something that works just fine. I know a lot of people say that they need to be replaced and they technically should be replaced because the head bolts the Subaru used are stretched to yield head bolts, which basically makes them a one-time use head bolt. And I think it's pretty uncontroversial that technically you're supposed to always replace those head bolts. But in reality, a lot of people reuse them. And I know a lot of people have had no problem reusing those head bolts for hundreds of thousands of miles on that new engine build. But for this EJ205 motor that I'm putting in my 1998 RS Coupe, this motor is eventually going to be tuned and it's going to be seeing a lot higher boost levels than those stock boost levels. And installing these head studs while we replace this head gasket with a new multi-layer head gasket is definitely a good job to add a little bit more clamping force to those heads and probably give it a little bit more capacity for higher cylinder pressures in those combustion chambers and therefore we can give it a little bit more boost. That's why these ARP head studs are definitely a good idea if you plan on running higher boost levels than stock. Okay, so what's in these suckers? So I paid about 185 bucks for this package, free shipping. You get the instructions with a little ARP sticker. Automotive racing products, classic name. Here's your instructions for installing on the EJ series motors. And basically, as you can see right here, these head studs are good for the two liter or the 2.5 liter dual overhead cam EJ motors. And that's basically the turbo motors the Subaru makes. Go ahead and take this off. Okay, and as you can see, it comes with a little fastener lubricant. That way, when you torque the nuts down on these head studs, you're gonna get uniform, accurate readings. We got a bag full of nuts. These are flanged 12-point nuts. We got a bag full of washers. And then we've got our studs. One side is gonna screw down into the block, and the other side is gonna stick up out of the block. We're gonna slide the head over the stud, and then we're gonna put the nut over it, and then tighten down the nut. And I'm gonna walk you guys through that right now. Okay guys, I got everything unboxed from the package and the first step is to read those instructions closely. So let's walk through this. The first step is to inspect all the hardware prior to installation, look for defects and the shipping damages, and if so, give them a call at that number. Okay, that's the first step. That's fine, I did that already. All the parts look good and I'm good to go. Step number two is to ensure proper thread engagement and accurate torque readings, they want you to clean all your threads in the block. And then they say to chase those threads with this chase number and that part number. Now a lot of you guys aren't gonna have this special part number. So what I'm gonna do and what you guys can do is actually just go ahead and grab one of your old head bolts. We're gonna use that head bolt, we're gonna clean the threads. I'm gonna run this head bolt down all the threads through all the bolt locations before I put any of these headsets in. That's gonna help clean out those threads inside the block and it's definitely better than doing nothing. Okay, and step number three is to clean the spot faces on the cylinder head where the washer seats, and they recommend using a solvent or a brake parts cleaner. So basically, they just want you to have a clean surface on that head. That way your torque readings, when you torque these nuts down, are going to be accurate. Okay, so moving on to step number four, it's install the head gasket in the cylinder head. And then step number five is to screw the studs into the block hand tight, but do not torque them yet. And they say that the hex broach in the end of the stud is designed to assist with installing and removing the studs from the block, not for applying torque. Okay, so what are they talking about right there? They're talking about this little hex fitting where you're gonna put a four millimeter Allen fitting into it to screw it down. Don't apply any torque to that. It's not meant to apply torque. It's just meant to quickly screw it in and remove it. Okay, then moving on to step number six, they say then using a clean dry rag, remove all the oil from both sides of the washer, the cylinder head and the washer mating surfaces 
must be free of oil, grease, and lubricants. And then last, they say failure to keep these surfaces dry may result in inconsistent preloads. Okay, so we'll definitely make sure we follow those instructions. We'll have a clean surface on the cylinder head and that washer mating surface. And then moving on to step number seven, place the washers over the studs and on the dry, clean spot faces of the cylinder head. Step number eight, lubricate the stud threads and the bottom of the nuts with the ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. And that's this stuff in that little blue package. ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. And then install the nuts onto the studs and tighten hand tight. And then last, step number nine, follow the manufacturer's recommended torque sequence shown below, and that's this figure right here, and torque the nuts per steps one through three. So step one will be torque the nuts to 30 foot pounds, Step two, we torque the nuts to 60 foot pounds. And step three, we torque the nuts to 90 foot pounds. And for each one of these torque stages, we're gonna follow this diagram for the order in which we tighten those nuts. We're gonna start from the middle right here with number one, and then move on to two, three, four, five, and six. Okay guys, at this point, the next step is actually to drop on those new head gaskets and to drop your heads on the block, and then to drop in those ARP studs and thread them all down hand tight. But before you put these new head gaskets on that short block, Make sure you take a second and you look at those piston tops and you clean any carbon deposits that may be left on those piston tops. Because a lot of times when you're gonna do a rebuilt engine or you're doing a head gasket job on one of these Subarus, there's gonna be a ton of carbon deposits left on the top of those pistons. And the best way to clean all that carbon deposit off is to make sure you use something that's not gonna scratch or mar the top of those pistons. Use something like a brass wire brush and some carb cleaner. That works great and you'll get those surfaces really, really clean. And then the other surface you actually want to clean before you drop these head gaskets on is the surface that these head gaskets are sealing. Take a close look at that mating surface and make sure there isn't any residue or any material from that last head gasket still left on the surface. And if there is some, make sure you remove it carefully and again, use something like a brass wire brush and some carb cleaner and that should remove it no problem and it won't leave any marring or any scratches in the surface. That way you've got a fresh surface for this head gasket you have the top of those pistons totally clean of any old carbon deposits, and you're ready to drop these heads on, screw in those studs, and then torque everything to spec. As you can see, I've got these pistons really clean. I removed all the carbon off the top of these pistons, and I just used a brass wire brush and some carb cleaner. That works great every time. And you also notice that I actually have a little assembly lube on the inside of the cylinder walls. You always wanna add a little bit of assembly lube or some 30 weight anytime you're reassembling a short block engine that's been sitting and it doesn't have any oil in there. And then the other place you wanna take a close look at is actually this mating surface for that head gasket. As you can see, that head gasket mating surface has a lot of staining in it, but as I move my nail over it, there's actually no rough edges on that at all that I can feel with my fingernail. And that's a really good home test. If you can run your fingernail over that little surface and you don't feel any ridges, that should be a smooth enough surface. Don't worry about any of that staining that's in the metal. And then of course, if you have a straight edge and a feeler gauge, you can always throw that straight edge down on the short block and then use your feeler gauge to see how much gap you have and make sure you actually have a totally flat and true surface. And if you're gonna do that, go ahead and throw it down on this direction, this direction, and this direction. That way you get three separate passes to see if this surface is totally flat. Okay, so I'm ready to go to the short block. I'm ready to drop those new multi-layer steel head gaskets on. And that's what I've got right here. This is a Subaru OEM multi-layer steel head gasket. And as I show you kind of from the profile view, you guys can kind of see that multi-layer design. So that's the multi-layer steel head gaskets. Now you guys might be wondering which direction these head gaskets go. Well, that's an easy one. These head gaskets actually only go in one direction. You can kind of see they won't go in this direction because those ports won't line up, right? You got these big gaps up here. So it definitely doesn't go in that direction. You need to line those up with that oil passage down there. So the other question is, does it go this way? or does it go this way, right? When you line up those dowels. And if you go this way, you're actually missing the port right there. So you need to rotate it around, and that's the only direction that that head gasket can be dropped down on. Now I'll go ahead and grab the right side cylinder head, and I'll drop that over those alignment dowels. Nice and carefully. Those alignment dowels should line everything up so I can drop that head down. And I'll double check that it's lined up. Yes, it is. And of course, these heads were machined at my local machine shop. These heads were resurfaced, and I also had the valve train rebuilt and everything checked. So I know these heads are good to go, and they're gonna have a totally flat, true surface. Okay, now we have the head set down on the block. We can go ahead and install those ARP head studs. Now, which direction do these head studs go? They only go in one direction, 
And on one side, we have that Allen key fitting, and that's the side that faces up. So go ahead and screw these studs in with that side facing up. Follow the instructions, and like the instructions say, we're not gonna put any oil or any of that ARP lubricant on the threads that go into the short block. And I'll go ahead and get each one of these started. I'll screw it down hand tight. Okay, now it comes to torquing these suckers down. The instructions from ARP say to do it hand tight, but don't go all crazy He-Man on it. Because this little four millimeter Allen fitting definitely can't take a whole lot of torque. Okay, here's a close up view guys. So you guys can get an idea of how far those threads go in and how it kind of bottoms out. Boom, right there. It definitely seats right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little micrometer and give you guys an estimate of about how far this stud sticks out from this washer surface. All right, let's go ahead and put the sucker down and bring it down. Bam, right there. Okay, so that's about the total height. Okay, that measurement is right about 19 or 20 millimeters. So that's about the distance those ARP head studs should be sticking out, 19 or 20 millimeters. And then go ahead and make sure all the other studs are all sticking out about 19 or 20 millimeters also. That way, you know, all of them are seated fully. Yep, good. Yep, good. Yep, that one's good. Yep, that one's good. And of course, our original one, our reference point. Yep, that one's good. Okay, so all six of these ARP studs are fully seated. We can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to put on those washers without any of the lube. Okay, here's the next step. Bust out these washers and give them one wipe down with a clean microfiber rag and put them on dry. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Clean them up real fast. And I'll put that sucker down. It's a hardened steel washer. Super strong metal. I'll go ahead and clean each one of these washers real fast with this microfiber rag and then drop it on dry. We're actually not gonna use any of that ARP lubricant until we put that flanged nut on. Okay, this is the last one for this side. Drop that sucker on. We are good to go. Okay, now we're ready to finally bust open that ARP assembly lubricant. We're gonna apply this lubricant to the threads on these head studs and to the bottom of this flange nut. Now, it might be a little bit tricky to get in there, and that's why I have a box of these extra little small paint brushes. And these work perfect to get in the tight little spots where you need to add some lubricant. So if you got something like this around, this is a great little tool to use to get that lubricant on those ARP head stud threads. Get it on that thread. You could just put it on one side and that nut would smear it down as it threads down, but I'm actually just gonna put a nice even coat all around it because I can get in there real easily with this little brush. Don't worry about putting anything on the bottom surface, just put it on the threads, exactly like the instructions say, and then the coating on the bottom of the flange nut will take care of lubricating the bottom surface. So go around to all of these studs and give them a nice little coating of this lubricant. Okay, I've got all six of these studs nicely coated with that lubricant. Okay, next are the bottom of these flange nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and lube up all six of these flange nuts at once. All right, all six of these nuts are all lubed up. I'm gonna go ahead and drop them on those studs. Start by snugging them all down, just hand tight, and then we'll go ahead and torque them down in the torque sequence that they provided on that diagram on the instructions. But for now, let's go ahead and install each one of these suckers. All right, and the last nut goes right here. Okay guys, here's that diagram again. We're gonna go through these three torque settings. The first one will be to 30 foot-pounds. When we torque these nuts down to 30 foot-pounds, we're gonna go in this order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So once we tighten all those nuts down in that order to 30 foot-pounds, then we'll go on to step two, which is 60 foot-pounds. We'll go through the same tightening sequence 
and then go to step three, 90 foot pounds in the same sequence. And then we'll have all these ARP head stud nuts totally torqued to their specs. Okay guys, the first round of torque is gonna be 30 foot pounds. And remember that order from that figure, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then the second one is right here. Torque this one down to 30 foot pounds. All right, and this one next, torque this one to 30 foot pounds. Nice and steady. Four, five, six. All right, now we go to round two. Okay, round two is 60 foot pounds. Let's torque these suckers down that same sequence to 60 foot pounds. Boom, 60. Number two, straight down, nice steady. Boom, number two. Boom, 60. Move over here to number four, and then slow and steady for the 60 foot pounds. Boom, 60. All right, then move over here for number five. Boom. And then over for number six, the last one. Boom, 60. Okay, and for the third round, we gotta go to 90 foot pounds. And for 90 foot pounds, I'm gonna jump up to my big ass half inch snap on torque wrench. So 90 foot pounds, and make sure we do it in that same sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bam, 90. 90. Bam, make sure you got a nice good bite on the nut. If you wanna strip this sucker. Boom, number four is done. Bam, and we'll move up to number six for the last one. Bam, six. And that head is completely done. Next step is to lube everything up, drop those camshafts in, torque those cam caps all the way down to those factory torque specs, and they're not very much, I'll tell you that right now. But I'm gonna wrap it up there for today, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I hope this DIY video on how to install those ARP head studs in those Subaru OEM multi-layer steel head gaskets was some help for you guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comments section. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And if you think these videos would be good for some of your friends in the Subaru community, please go ahead and share these videos. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. My name's Luke. This is the Subaru Only Show. Until next time, guys. Later!